it stays in the ground. Usually, when you when you harvest your crop, about 10% falls on the ground. So you've actually got a seed burden higher than what you would have if you planted that crop sitting in that paddock. Now you graze your sheep on it, and then uh, when it rains the next year, up it up it comes. Hopefully, when it does rain, if it rains, <laughs> up it comes, and um, and. And then you spray it with a chemical to be able to put your wheat crop in, or in this case, a lupin crop. Lupins um, are also sprayed with triazine, so they, they can stay alive. So up comes all the yellow flowers in there. It's not meant to have any in it. But it's resistant to um, triazine. One of the GM crops that's coming out is resistant to glyphosate. That's our main knockdown chemical. So you're going to have this sort of major, major problem popping up in every single crop. And, and the customers, so you, you put a wheat crop in, but you've sprayed it with glyphosate, so the only thing that's going to live is your glyphosate tolerant canola. And, and you, then you, when you go to harvest your, your um, crop, you're going to have GM canola in it. And the markets don't want GM canola in it. Canada does grading it out to them too. So they sort it all out so the small seeds fall through and they just send the wheat through. We don't do grading it out to them. And that could add an extra $10 a tonne to all of our other industries, which is massive. Um, storage and handler. We share storage and handling facilities, but they're not going to have GM and non-GM run side by side. They're saying it's OK. I'll to explain why later on. Transport industry. Um, you, you've all seen the pictures of, of um, uh, the canola running, or you've all seen when you drive down the road, the canola along the side of the road and railway line. If your truck can't hold water, it won't hold canola. Seed cleaning, as I explained, we've got a seed cleaning factory, and if GM canola comes in, we will stop grading canola because we can't test it to see if anyone's got contamination and we don't want any cross, cross contamination. Usually we clean up thoroughly between each load. Canola is the only one we admit that we just cannot do. It gets stuck behind belts. It's the worst seed in the world to, keep, keep, to clean out after. And contaminated seed. How the heck can a non-GM farmer provide a non-GM product when we're planting contaminated seed to start with? See the size of the match? This is the seed you're dealing with here. It's tiny. So. There, the seed industry said 0.5% was okay. Now, I was on the Grain Council Australia Seeds Subcommittee when we were supposedly gave a unanimous decision that that was okay. I was on it. I said a definite no. I said there was problems. But it still got reported as unanimously okay. And, and my, my points that, that the ACCC didn't recognise it didn't matter. They were voting yes. So when we deliver to the receival point, we'll be asked, do you have GM? How the heck would you know? You would expect a test at least. So you look at Bayer's test. So remember, you've got two varieties there. Bayer's test take 20 minutes. So you've got to be cure trucks. They're not going to, you know, you're in a hurry. You're harvesting. It's flat out. This is particular bad jam at that time at, at our place at, at Nidigo. Mm -hmm. But um, it takes 20 minutes. Now, it's only accurate if it's over 9.2%. That's outrageous. You could st spend a week or two sending it off to the only lab over, over east <laughs> and cost you hundred, uh, what is it, $400 or so, $800. But you're not going to do that. It's not practical. Monsanto and New Farms has a test, or Monsanto's test, 0.5%. It would detect as okay. It was going through Grains Council where they wanted an end point royalty on their, their crop. That means that once they find contamination in it, they could invoice us, they could deduct from our income. They don't invoice us where we've got a right to say no. They deduct from our payment their royalty, whatever they want. We asked for protection at this at the New South Wales Parliamentary Advisory Council, uh, Juliet McFarlane asked, but, and she was told, you've got to trust Monsanto. <laughs> you are to trust Monsanto with a blank cheque. No risk management. 
So when we deliver our grain and we think that it's not contaminated and it tests we don't know, you sign to guarantee that the grain does not include any GM material. And worse than that, that we indemnify the, anyone else that might cause it. That means non-GM farmers are to accept the liability of any recall of the product, any contamination cleanup along the supply chain. Individually, millions of dollars could come back to, through the QA program that's suddenly compulsory and extremely expensive is imposed on us, to the sample that caused it and an individual could go broke. No one in their right mind will be able to pro provide the product you want, a non-GM or a GM-free product. Sorry, we are all going to be forced, conventional farmers will be forced to market as GM. It doesn't only impact on the canola industry. The honey industry are signing QA agreements to say that the bees haven't been within five kilometres of a crop. They don't know how. Where are they? Who's going to grow it? And the main market is Europe, extremely GM sensitive. So we're going to kill our honey industry. Poultry, milk, meat, these QA agreements, we're all signing to guarantee that our stock has not fed on any GM products. Even the yabbies our kids sell, they're signing QA agreements. <laughs> so in the future, what's the next crop? We're holding GM grass. Okay, if they plant it, how, what normally happens is the farmers lose their right to replant our own seed, which I forgot to mention, the non-GM farmer does too because it's, they've made it compulsory, we buy new seed every year. But the GM grass, usually they're not going to give, you know, buy new seed every year because they've planted it and it stays there. They don't harvest it. So how are they going to work the costing on that? Are they going to send them an invoice every year? What about the potty calf that sticks its head through the fence? Are you going to charge that potty calf to eat it? And what about the other, the grass when it spreads across the fence? Do it, does everybody have to do it if they're, if they're eating it? It's a patented gene. This is different. This is a patent. Wherever it goes, all its progeny is GM. So we have to pay for the right to have it on our property, even if we don't want it on our property. Worse still, what about GM wheat? No market wants GM wheat because while oil escapes labelling or stock feed escapes labelling, you must label your products of GM wheat as GM. No market will accept it. But if even one farmer grows it commercially, all of us have to prove we do not have GM in our wheat. And we can't. That we are guaranteed there is no GM in, in our wheat. And we can't. There's not even a test. It is nothing short of industry sabotage. That is why nowhere in the world grows GM wheat. But we have a government push wanting farmers in Australia to grow GM wheat. It might have something to do with the state governments that are pushing this, owning intellectual property and patents on GM wheat and wanting to profit from farmers.